Now I've been thinking, or thinking about this method here also, how to prove um, that I will retain the original geometry. And one way I thought now is to square up this, put it here, or actually put it to this side also, but better if I know that this is uh, pristine, meaning that I used the original way here, which I know is milled flat and has not been in use because this has been using the, the narrow guide. And I can square it up this here and then all this is and then of course I indicate now I can in put this to this clamp it down and I can also now since I know that these are flat I can I can uh, run the indicator there just to make sure the idea is that I've proven that all these Surfaces this of course should be measured to this different means either a test indicator or a, or a micrometer the same with this to this and to this micrometer reading and then TTI uh, test indicators This is of course being also just scraped so it shall be a better contact area, but these are flat these are just uh, is not in use for anything but static fit. I mean, to the apron here and the rear hold on. So I know that these are flat, and then I can use this to to mill and uh, be certain that these are flat. Now that I know these are parallel to the unworn way here. I can use them for guidance. I, I knew that also from the beginning, but at least I now scraped and verified them. So I just do it, I think, the simplest way here with the, with the square here, and then back it up to the square, just deciding on which T-slot to use. So I just nip it up and then... So just uh, move it in again. Of course I can do it like that. Running the axis at the same time. Okay. Let's run an indicator here to see if it's true. Setting zero. There, and then running out. Let's hundreds of a millimeter out and then yeah so um, which way too much I think we'll use it there. So I'm hoping that will be sufficient. And I can lower the cutter again. So setting zero. And I'll just have the mic so I find the um, or um, to the to indicate so I find the lowest spot and I go from there.
doesn't have to be such a pretty finish because I'm going to scrape anyhow. No, just uh, I want to flatten it. So I want to go a little bit deeper in so I get into the dovetail. And I'm not really concerned about uh, climb milling or um, or conventional milling because there is very little backlash in this uh, milling machine here. Not surprisingly, it was uh, most worn on this side, so the lowest here, which is where I guess, well, most in use tool pressure. Anyway, uh, I've taken it down the minimum amount, it's just a few hundreds really, maybe something between. Five and ten. So finally there. didn't clean up all the way down there so that was actually the lowest spot but anyway and um, maybe I will take out this one but doesn't matter anyhow I've cleaned it up inside here and on the other side and also here can't feel anything so um, now I know it's flat to these and now I can put it on here and I can mill mill out rule on or, or measure the rule on at, at least now I can take the indicator over here so it registers zero then I can run it to either side still be at zero. I should be able to turn it around. Do the same from this side. This one is a little bit low, as you can see. Or is it high? No, it's low. I'm not too concerned because inside here, it's only two hundreds. That's within scraping tolerance. So, so far so good. And yes, I am aware that after having milled off a little bit on each side, this gib side is not a problem, but on the other side here, that I'm moving the, um, this over to this side, so that the center line for this hole is not entirely correct. So it might be that I have to, to drill out these holes bigger, so that they fit. I mean, wasn't much, but could be that they bind a little bit. So. Maybe I drill out the corresponding hole so that it does not bind on me. The same goes for, of course, downwards 